Oh my god, Nintendo's making a theme park? Imagine all the rides, the food, the slight hit to Disney's plan in world domination, and oh my god, they released a new trailer for their YouTube channel, a music video? Oh boy, let's watch it. So that's Mario. Yeah, it's Mario. Yeah, understandable, it's more Mario. And it's Mario. It's Mario. The video's over and it's still Mario. It's all just Mario. What the crap? It's all Mario. Now, without my world breaking Mario's time machine powers, by the time this video has been released, I won't know whether Soul Cal attractions have already teleported to the Mushroom Kingdom via painting and has filmed every inch of the park for the world to see, like a Twitter timeline after Endgame just aired. But I do not need to find out. Anyway, I've already scripted my complaint and made my stand on why... Why is this called Super Nintendo World? Hey, I'm not upset. In fact, I really can't wait to go straight to Osaka and punch some fictional dinosaurs to extend their frog-like tongue. But... I mean, we all thought of it, right? Super Nintendo World? Yeah, right, I don't see any Manita here. It's all Mario and no one else in the vast 30 years worth of Nintendo history. I mean, to be fair, there's already a DK park planned. Zelda's room for the Islands of Adventures, and we even got some rumors for Pokemon and Kirby, but out of context, it's false marketing. So, I'm gonna do the homework for you, Nintendo. Instead of being productive and whining about Pokemon Unite on Twitter, I'll give you my ideas. And I'll be totally willing to accept payment down the line, because this just looks like the state of IP support on the Wii U, and we all know how much that's sold. So starting off... Oh boy, smooching time! Ah! Alright, I'm not a big Zelda man myself. I've seen Breath of the Wild, and I've played exactly half of The Legend of the Elf Luigi Whistle of Continuity. But, I have some ideas, and I did my research, so hear me out. Now, obviously the entrance is the temple on time, even I know what that is. I think the ride should probably leave the main plot of Zelda alone. I'm sorry, but having the full Zelda journey and a ride just feels a bit jarring, and I have a feeling everything would be rushed. Instead, we're gonna take inspiration from Link's Crossbow Training. Link's Crossbow Training. But no, seriously, we're gonna take that Buzz Lightyear route and make a shooter on the Master Cycle Zero. Honestly, it just feels right to have this thing as a vehicle. I mean, it was not Mario Kart. Quick pause. This is totally unrelated to the current part of the video, but there's actually two Master Cycles. The one that's in Mario Kart 8, and the other one that's also in Mario Kart 8. Uh, this one's the Master Cycle, however, this one is the Master Cycle Zero. I don't know what the relationship between these two vehicles are, I just thought that was a really cool detail that Nintendo included. And maybe we could see the original first Mario Kart 8 Master Cycle as an upgraded version of the Master Cycle Zero in Breath of the Wild 2? I don't really know, but I hope it kinda happens. Now goodbye! And that game was supposed to show how realistic driving in Italy works, so why can't we have it in real life at this point? Now, for standards, we'll use the ancient bow and arrows as a way to shoot. As then, we wouldn't need real arrows, the bow could just light up to indicate the string's been pulled back and shoot with a laser. Or those augmented reality glasses that they're using for the Mario Kart ride. The story will be explained in the pre-show. You'll enter a room and surround the old wrinkly statue thing you see at the end of a Breath of the Wild shrine, and it'll project some words narrated by Zelda. Ahem. <coughs> arrows, Hyrule is about to face great danger as Ganon's power rises once again. I don't know why I sound like that one time when Pikachu spoke in the Pokemon movie. I always want to be with you. But moving on. The Blood Moon will shine through the kingdom, save our villages, and slay the resurrected monsters. Blah, 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 blah. My fair kills at 40 on ledge. And then you'll be like, excuse me, princess. And you'll be off to your quest to kill some Bacabrins and save some villages and maybe even have a guardian chase you a bit along with that melody that I can't bear to hear for six seconds. I know that this ride would not have any like references to the Zelda franchise and no direct appearances of well, anything really, but personally when I think of Zelda I think of adventure, the sprawling landscapes of the dying rest of the world. It's neat. And after the Islands of Adventure leak, or whatever leak that's been thrown around on 4chan, it'd be nice for it to not be the Luigi of Nintendo franchises overshadowed by the Big Red M. Wait, now that I think about it, Zelda's the third wheel, because... Knowing Pokemon's wide, non-video game appeal, I think they should just have Pokemon snap the ride. I mean, they brought him back for the Switch, and it's a no-brainer at this point. 
Now, this would probably be like a boat ride, like your It's a Small World, your Jungle Cruise, and the really forgettable Avatar boat ride that I can't be bothered to remember its name. But personally, I would really adore it if we had a land vehicle, similar to that of Animal Kingdom's Kilimanjaro Safari, and we could get a Professor Oak doing like some kind of National Geographic Animal Planet announcer. Now, will Bear Grylls be called as the voice actor for said Professor Oak? I don't know! Because Nintendo themselves are mainly handling this, it feels like we can accept a good quality filled Pokemon themed attraction. We could be roaming around the field of Panitas or passing through a river filled with aimlessly flopping Magikarp. Whatever it is, it'll 100% probably be an all ages ride. Like, Pokemon is way too big to focus on the gaming side at this point. But if we could get a fun attraction anything better than the one abandoned theme park that Pokemon did a while back, I'd be satisfied. If we could just hope that the multi-million dollar corporation can stop making money moves, that is. <coughs> Unite. <coughs> Cafe mix. <coughs> Minecraft. Okay. But apart from that, personally, I would love it if we had Pokemon the Virtual Fighting Ring. Now, if something like this were to ever happen, it would definitely 900% be the most game freak move ever if they made it compatible with Pokemon Go. I mean, seriously, that would be the largest brain move I would have seen from Nintendo since, like, the freaking Virtual Console. Like, make a queue that wraps around the battle arena and make them fight on the center like that Pokemon Sword and Shield Stadium. Take out your phone and tap it onto the registry ring and select three Pokemon to convert them into an HD model. You'll be able to then move it around and make it use its moves. Typing would matter, but levels or combat points, my bad, would probably not because let's be honest, I'd already be intimidated by this dude anyway. Now, sure, it would be absolutely traumatizing if you lost in front of a bunch of strangers. But hey, it's better than if you were to wait for another Pokemon Stadium title. <sighs> There's not gonna be another Pokemon Stadium title, is there? Anyway, moving on. How can I help you, King DDD? I need a monster to claw but at that Kirby! That's what we do best at NME. You better get it with a money back guarantee! Kirby has always had a questionable branding and audience. Like, the game's made for children, but the ESRB blue bought that opportunity to ever be the case. Oh, and I guess... Personally, I think for once they should actually acknowledge some of the stuff Kirby actually does in his games. Like, for the longest time, Nintendo's Kirby support has been Look at this Kirby train! To, oh look, it's the Kirby Cafe! To a literal wall of Kirby merch that rivals Pokemon! Like, honestly, what's the point of beating around the bush at this point when the newest game has freaking Void Termina? And on top of that, from Zero Two to Magalar Soul, it's basically a running joke at this point that the franchise is more child-friendly than the Virtual Boy is for my eyes. So, although we could stop at the slowest game of Kirby Air Ride ever, there's also an incredible amount of source material to work to create a mildly intense attraction by using Kirby. Personally, I would want them to go full out virtual CG Star Tours slash Simpsons The Ride route. The vehicle will be a warp star that'll tilt and tumble like some kind of obscure game on the Game Boy Color, and you'll be zooming across Dreamland. Now, story-wise, I'd say Marx would be the best villain. Mostly because every other Kirby boss does nothing except sit around and want to do cutscenes and literally pull out their bleeding eyeball- Oh my god, that's disgusting. Get me back to when Gooey was being a hobo to the public, not whatever this SCP is. Now, whilst all the other Kirby villains are being a plot device, Marx actually has a bit more involvement throughout his story. So if you were to theoretically take Milky Way wishy wishes out of source material, I'd start the ride probably with a pre-show in the common green green, where the sun and moon suddenly start DBZing it up. We would see Kirby be like, POYO! And then March tells him to get the frick away from him and go find a Nova Star to stop the probably really confusing daylight savings issue Dream Man is having. Anyway, pre-show's not over. Time to hop onto the Warp Star and you fly past DDD's castle in the Halberd. And while having some arbitrarily thrown in Kirby references, we then get to your boy's Nova Star. But then wait, Kirby's wish was rudely interrupted by Marx, and he instead evolves into his full form. giant freaking gun. And as you fight it out, Kirby kicks the pick out of Mark and sends him straight into the Nova Star and like... Yeah. 
And we end. Seeing some acknowledgement about the horror of the Kirby multiverse by Nintendo publicly as a SoCal immortalized attraction would be really cool instead of every other public Kirby material that paints them to be less dangerous than breathable air. However, other than that, I think the earlier stated Kirby Cafe would be legitimately amazing if it was in the park. Like, I actually went there and took a couple of pictures, and my god, it's freaking adorable. Just look at the wispy woods, the cute Waddle Dee plushies, these wooden alphabet letters representing the D rock band three times. Overall, Hal's been sleeping in their armada of Kirby products, so it'd be cool to have something else other than Kirby Castle Crashers. Now, moving on from the bald 30 year old. Beating up children in real life? Back up here. Now, think where your light's coming from. You have to start making some big decisions now. Right here, touch, no pressure. Just the weight of the knife. No pressure. Now, for the entire time, I've been giving out ideas, but honestly, this is the one idea I actually want in Nintendo World. Alright, I think you know where I'm going with this one. It's easily feasible, it's barely an effort, a dedicated Splatoon stable. <laughs> It'll play all the hologram waifu songs on a consistent timetable. Come on, Nintendo, it really is not that hard. Just put an off-brand green Tokyo Tower and make Spadoon fans lose their damn minds. We have a bit of lasers, some lights, some off-brand Miiverse posts immortalized into billboards. Like, honestly, if they could recreate the live show they were doing in Inkling Plaza during Splatfest, I'd really be down. I wouldn't expect every show outside, I mean, the sun's gonna burn my retina, so probably gonna be like one of those periodic events where it's gonna be like a once in a day when the sun's down. They can do it outside, whilst every other time, they have a stadium, which they do it inside. This would actually be a show instead of this awkward Nintendo World showcase that probably confused a lot of the investors watching it live. Anyway, back to the Squid Kids. They could go full on with the Otaku Squid Idol merch, along with a $4,000 life-sized marina statue that I'm gonna need in my life, and cram tons of Splatoon-related things down the alleyway, like Krusty Sean, some clothing stores, the black market, basically everything other than the actual Splatoon gameplay. I mean, the greatest part about the world is the theming and the 80s alien funk style it had, with all the graffiti, diced squid hair, and mammal genocide. Anyway, that's about it. Now, overall, Super Mario World is really cool. And honestly, I can't wait for what Nintendo's planning to do. Because let's be honest, there is an insane amount of money waiting to be made here. And it's hard to believe that they'll stop with the Trio Mario mainstays. Although we'd be having to wait for a couple of years until it ever comes into fruition, if we can see some cinematic music video pop up for all the other Nintendo franchises, I'd be really happy. You know, after being 90% of Theme Park X's traffic, I should probably check out this theme park for myself. It'll probably be done by the time this video airs, as long as nothing bad happens to delay the park or anything- GOD DAMN IT!